Hey, hi. In this video, I will show you how to set up Oracle Cloud infrastructure function in function application. As you see in this uh, PPT, this PPT will help you to understand how the function application functions are been set at a real time. Uh, the outer uh, box, it will depict the root compartment. Within the root compartment, we would have a dedicated compartment which is suggested to have it. Uh, we call that as a function compartment. And that function compartment, we do provide the required access by configuring a policy on that one. And then within that compartment, we're gonna create the function application, which is depicted by uh, this blue box. And this function application is that, you know, uh, will be hosted in a virtual uh, uh, virtual network, which is VCN. We will, in this video, we will see like how uh, VCN should be configured in real time. And then within this function application, we will see like you know how we need to create a template of python runtime function and then we will see like how we need to deploy this and then uh, then you know how does that python uh, function works when we try to invoke it uh, let's all these demo will be uh, demoed with using the cloud shell right so we're gonna use the oracle cloud provided cloud shell and try to you know do this configuration and see that how does uh, the python code will run in a in a serverless application that is uh, you know function application here all right so let's go and try to see all these configurations and and do a real-time demo here now i'm in my oracle cloud subscription as you see here currently i'm in identity so remember that before i go to the uh, function application uh, we need to do certain uh, prerequisite configurations i assume that you know you have the your compartment ready if you don't have the compartment, you can always create a compartment like here by going to the identity, go to the compartment and create a dedicated compartment for this uh, particular function. Something you can give the name which is needed and then target it to a, a parent compartment that is root compartment. And that's all, click on a create compartment. Right, so in this demo, I'm gonna use the this one that is ending with the 401 compartment name. Now, once the compartment is ready, what we do is you need to create a policy so that required permissions are provided on that compartment. To create a policy, you need to create, click on a create policy and give the name of your policy, say like uh, test policy, and then give provide the required descriptions. Compartment, it should be root compartment because policies sits in the root compartment. Uh, in the policy builders, you need to uh, choose the use cases. So let's here you choose the functions as a use cases rest all option keep it default go to the identity domain and here you choose the default and then in the select group so i have the default admin group created when i have subscribed the oci so i have chosen the admin privilege and then the location here you need to choose the compartment where you're going to create your function application and functions so i have chosen that and then click on the create policy which means that you know it will provide you the required permissions okay so in my case i have already did it that is function policy all right, and it has a full access on the on the you know the app function application so this is a prerequisite with this done you know we go to the next tab so this is the uh, basically function so if you go to the main search and try to see like a function here and then click on a function feature you can click on that it will take you to the page that is a function page so here you need to uh, switch to your compartment here so that is uh, so this is the compartment like this switch to the compartment where you need to create the uh, you know the function application so we need to create a function applications and here also you can see that in which context of your you know the uh, compartment you are currently so first let's create a, a applications which is needed for it i'm going to give the name like you know demo uh, demo func app yeah and then it actually demands you to uh, uh, you know it also it also needs it also actually asks you to provide the further details which includes vcn I have already created a VCN for this part of the demo. I'm going to show you like what are all the configurations that has been kept on the VCN. Um, so uh, that is VCN, yeah. So here I have selected the this VCN and then you need to choose the three subnets. So I have already created a three subnet in that VCN. Uh, so that's have been chosen. And then the, in the shapes, you we're going to use the cross 86 shapes, which is basically architecture of app application, uh, you know, servers like that. Here, note that this is purely serverless, so you are not managing any server, you are not managing uh, any application, but just you are creating a control plane and you are deploying your function and you are just responsible to, uh, you know, write the code and deploy the code. And then, you know, your code will be executed on demand by the 
uh, you know the function application here so click on a create so we're going to click on a create like this which will create a container called um, which will create a container application in, in a very layman term so oracle cloud has designed the serverless uh, services which actually runs your piece of code uh, at a high you know very uh, very detailed or basically it's a very standard and enterprise that i can say because it provides extensive capability when it compares with the competitive or basically contemporary cloud providers like azure and aws right so this uh, oracle cloud uh, function does something extra you know extraordinary job you can create a one function of application and deploy the functions as a container application in this sense, you can deploy you know the n number of functions within that function application containing different different runtimes yeah so that is ba basically under the hood it looks like it is acting as an you know the container uh, you know the cluster like that the the function application is working looking like a a container application like that yeah which is actually architect states your uh, you know the functions all right so this is what once you click on uh, function applications and uh, we created a demo function app within that you know we need to create a function now so if i go back to the uh, functions as of now i don't have any functions so we're going to create the functions uh, if you go to the get started button right so currently we are if i go back to the applications to help you to uh, you know to be very clear so we have created an application click on that application and then um, go back to the function so currently we don't have any configure you know functions we will create it uh, to get a support from how to create um, uh, how to create the functions this uh, function has getting started guidelines been provided in a stepwise manner so we just follow that in this getting started options we're going to choose the cloud shell setup local setup you know i'm not recommending you to do that but for now we will get started and learn with the cloud shell setup only before i run these commands let me quickly walk you through the vcn configurations which is basically virtual cloud network configurations so this is an another networking service so in that one we have created an instance of called vcn instance so in this one, so this contains comprises of this CIDR, and uh, if I open this particular VCN, so we will see like how the subnets are being set up and all. So in this one, I have created three public subnets. By the way, you can see that, and then uh, in that one, we have created one route table. If you see that, and this route table is attached to all those three um, three subnets, and it has one route that is you know uh, targeting to an internet gateway to reach to the internet. For now, we are using a internet routing capability of the of the functions all right now likewise you can see that you know i have created an internet gateway and then in the security list so uh, we have allowed all communications on the port number this one but you can actually configure better than this one so far now this is what my configuration is all about for this demo and along with that we also need one container registry so as i said earlier function app in OCI is basically it's actually you know container orchestration application only in the sense it, it under the hood it looks like a, a, a Kubernetes cluster which is running uh, one function as a container application that's the reason it can host number of different different runtime functions um, it could be you can create a functions in the Python you can create a function runtime of Java and like that so that's the reason I am assuming that function app is nothing but it's a kubernetes cluster hosting number of container application as functions like that so for that case we need to have a repository so i have created a repository in this uh, compartment and that is a public repository by the way so this is we're going to use this particular repository down the line all right so that is what the one thing is all about uh, then let's go back to the uh, let's go back to this uh, function application and we get started with the uh, you know, we get started with this cloud setup hell, right? So what we do is I'm going to launch the cloud shell by clicking on the first button as the step number one says. So once you click on a launch cloud shell, so it will open you the cloud shell options down the line. And uh, from that terminal, we can actually execute the further commands. So we, I will explain you what are those commands does. Uh, but under the hood, you know, you just have to follow those, uh, you know, steps in an, in an, in a serial order like that. And eventually we will see that you know our functions and example functions will be hosted and it will run the it will do a you know uh, it will do the required job so as you see here my cloud cell setup is been done if you see here it's ready now i will just do a pwd just for uh, information so it has created this particular working directory for me 
so with that being said what we do is we're going to go to the step number two here uh, so that is the step number two um, so you can always copy those uh, CLA commands by clicking on the copy button here and then uh, try to paste it something like this so it will say like you know it will tell like function list context so what is the function list context currently so this is what uh, the function list context context is already for existing context but that is not enough it's going to update the context uh, with regards to our you know our uh, function app and the container registry if you see here previously i have tried that's the result is showing me uh, this context but let's get started with the further one so i will just uh, go ahead and run the next commands so next command is basically that is uh, function use this context so which is it will use this context which will say that currently it is already there all right but if it is already there we need to update it so let's do that actually so i'm going to um, update the update the context with the functions compartment id so this is what i am doing it now so they basically so whatever the you know the uh, context remember that uh, the function app will use an independent CLI called function CLI. Uh, so that is what you know this cloud shell is already installed with, and that's the reason the command let starts with the word called fn. Fn is nothing but you know the function uh, function CLI, which is independent CLI provided by Oracle. Uh, that is been already been installed. That's the reason these commands are responding. So we are using those commands to set the uh, you know function CLI context. And then with using that CLI, we, have, we will do the further required jobs for deploying and creating the functions, right? So we did that. And then let's go with the next command that is basically provide the unique repository name prefix. So that is basically set the context of the repository that has to be used by this particular uh, function uh, CLI. So I'm going to do that right away. So here you need to change the repo name. So uh, you have seen my repo name is, is what I've shown you here. So my repo name is demo C auth. So I will just try to update that command here. So if you see this command, it just function update context registry. And this is the registry, uh, you know, the URI. And here we need to replace this uh, in the square braces with the, our repo name. My repo name is demo C auth. So I will just do that and click on enter. That's also basically we are done with that. And then, you know, so it will ask you to generate the token. So we'll open this in a new tab here. So to authorize the, you know, the uh, registry, which is a public registry, we need to give the, you know, we need to authorize basically in the sense we need to log in uh, and provide the required password, which, which is basically, uh, you know, authorization token. So you can generate the authorization token by going back to the, uh, your own profile. If you go to the, your own profile, which is something you can go here as well. Go to the your uh, main profile click on your profile and from that profile it will take you to here and uh, you can create an auth token something like this uh, so to create an auth token you can just click on the generate token give like a demo right and say generate token uh, so it will say like you know, generate a maximum so basically it can create a maximum two token in one uh, in in one particular uh, for one profile so we're going to delete the existing uh, tokens all right, and then I will quickly create a token here that is a demo token, something like this. And then we create a click on a generate token, which will uh, create a token for us. I'm going to copy that particular token. We will use this token to authorize the registry. So next one is to log in the registry by using this particular command. Remember that this cloud shell is also installed with the Docker. So you need a Docker to be installed in your system. So that's the reason it is always suggested to use this particular cloud shell CL, you know, CLI. Our cloud shell terminal to interact with the, your um, function applications so in this case it is asking me to log into this particular um, uh, sjc.oci which is basically an endpoint for my registry uh, i need to authorize that basically by providing the my token which i have generated here so i'm going to go ahead and, and try to paste that token and click on enter so it should show us succeeded login succeeded then only you can go ahead with the next command in my case, as you see here, it is succeeded. The next command is actually, you know, you can now really um, use the FN CLI and try to interact with the function application. So in this case, we are running a command that is function list apps, which is function CLI only, which will interact with the uh, function app uh, APIs and give us the response. So it is giving me the function uh, application, which we created just now. So with that, you know, basically we are good now. 
So what we do is you know, we can go ahead and try to uh, deploy our application. So till now we are good. What I do is you know, I'm going to skip the uh, create deploy and invoke function, right? So here I'm not going to create the, uh, you know, the Java application, but I'm going to create the Python applications. I'm interested for Python. So I'm going to skip this uh, options. But again, what I do is, you know, so we can definitely do it by just changing the, you know, the runtime. So let me try to modify this command according to the runtime of Python. So what, instead of that, so here, let me explain this particular command as you see here. So let me uh, try to uh, make little bit uh, zoom out so that uh, it will become visibly uh, clear visible. So if you see here, function in it, runtime, you know, so here runtime is Python. So I'm going to use Python and give your function name. So let me call it as a demo Python func. So that is my function name within that function application. So I'm going to hit enter, which is basically, uh, you know, the uh, which basically creates a, a boilerplate for us. We can always check the boilerplate by running a command called ls. If you see here, and uh, we need to do this particular folder. So if you see that there is a folder being created, we go to that particular folder by doing cd. And if I do ls, it has created a three files, which is func.pi, function.yaml, and requirement.txt file. Let's do a cat of those uh, you know files so that you understand what is there inside these functions. So I will do a cat func.py, which is basically Python scripts. It, it is a simple Python script, by the way. Right. So likewise, you can always uh, check with the other files as well. That is cat func.yaml. Uh, so this is again, it contains a certain boilerplate configurations as well. So let's do the last one that is basically requirement. As you know that when you are working with the Python, you need to have a requirements.txt file, which actually list the required modules to be installed before you invoke the applications. So let me uh, do a cat of requirement.txt uh, file. So basically it contains nothing is as if you see that it contains, looks like it, it just has a FD case, that's all. So let me do a control C again, and let's do a cat of, um, of requirement.txt file, which contains uh, very bare minimum informations. All right, so requirement.txt file contains nothing for now, which is we are good. Let's go to the next command. So right now, if you see the step number that is uh, generate uh, the function boilerplate, which we done. And then we did a CD as well. As you see, we are already into that particular uh, function folder. And then you need to do next command is eventually, yes, go ahead and try to deploy it. So to deploy the functions, what I do is I need to run a command called fn, that is fn. fn means function CLI, hyphen uh, v, that is small letter v, and then say deploy, and then give the app. The app name for us, the app name is basically, uh, what is our app name? So we created an app name called um, here, demo function app, right? So I'm going to copy that and try to paste it here, right? So what we do is, you know, we are just running this command. Uh, when this, when you run this command, remember that under the hood, you know, there is a heavy lifting job is happening and that heavy lifting job is done by function CLI. That's the reason it is recommended to use the uh, function CLI when you are working with the uh, OCI function, right? While you are deploying and function within function application. So in my case, uh, if you see here, what happens is under the hood, it is wrapping my function folder as a container image. And uh, you know, in the sense, when you when it wraps to a container image, it needs to have a Docker file. So when you say like uh, function deploy by using command that is, uh, by using command that is the deploy, func hyphen v deploy, and then you're providing the app. So basically it, you know, it uh, it actually wraps your function uh, applications, files and folders as a container image dynamically, which means that, you know, dynamically it creates Docker file and runs that Docker file, creates an image and pushes that image into a container registry that we have created here. It happens dynamically with a bare, very bare minimum inputs here. If you see here, currently it is, uh, you know, it has built the job, it has built the image and uh, you know it is currently uh, doing an export if you see here currently it is pushing the image if you see here it has successfully it has successfully created a functions within this particular uh, you know the within this particular function that we have created great so in the sense you know we have uh, done the job now now last command if you see here if you see my above screen let me try to um, 
So the last command is just invoke your function that you have created. So if I go back to the cd dot dot and try to do ls, so this is what the function that we have created. Now we have wrapped that function as a container image, and that image has been used and and you know deployed into the uh, into the container. Now when we invoke that particular function, so what happens? You know, let's see that you know what happens under the hood actually. So let's try to invoke the uh, you know this uh, functions within that function app. So remember that why I'm not using hello Java because my function name is different than what is what is I have there. So I'm going to use this uh, uh, you know the so demo python punk basically that's my function. So I'm going to invoke that now from here. So we use uh, invoking in the sense we are, we are providing our app and what is the function within that. We are just invoking from here and uh, when you invoke it for the first time it will going to take you like nearby 30 seconds but when you invoke for a second time you know it will take uh, very instantaneous in the sense it will be responding uh, very quickly actually so we need to wait for a couple of seconds if you go if you see here right so it has responded which means that you know our function is working as expected right so let me try to invoke it again now this will this time this time it will give a response very quickly if you see here right now let's go back to the let's do a cd to this particular part that is a demo function app and then we as as i showed you earlier basically that's a you know basically that's a um, uh, you know that is a function which is runs a piece of code okay so let's if you see here now it has actually uh, you know uh, created a function template wrapped that function template as a container image push that container image into container registry and then when we invoke in the function it deployed and it has run the piece of code actually so now now we are done with this particular demo let me try to close it or exit and we're going to see that from the ui now so if you go to the ui here and now you see that there is a function which is created for us that is uh, you know the demo python function which is created here if you see and uh, you can always uh, check the configurations and metric configurations can be seen here now we go back to the containers and uh, if you see right now uh, so basically this is not converted into private if you see here i refresh it now and uh, it should be now acting as a private uh, repository for us because uh, you know when we do that deployment you know it will automatically convert it to a private repository uh, sorry it will try to uh, keep it uh, default as a public repository as it is now uh, you know you can always scan this particular repository uh, the image will be always there in this uh, repository that we have created now if i go back to this particular functions that we have just now seen now you should see some metrics in the sense there should be a, some invocation graph should be happening um, so likewise, uh, you know, so likewise, you know, you can always, uh, uh, you can always uh, try to invoke these functions from the cloud shell, or you can keep this function behind the API gateway and, and also invoke. So there are a lot many options that you can use it to invoke the, uh, this function that is using the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Oracle uh, CLI, function CLI, you can use uh, SDKs, uh, you can always use the, uh, some services in front of the functions like uh, API gateway and invoke it. All right. So with that note, you know, I have shown you like how to construct the uh, function applications. Um, and then we have seen like how we can uh, deploy an example function within that. So we have seen this uh, Python function being deployed and, uh, and you know, so we have, uh, um, you know, we have seen, we have actually invoked that function and it is giving us response. Let's try to do something, some more uh, experiment here. So I'm going to copy this invoke endpoint, which is basically api of your function so we will invoke this from the internet actually and let's see what it happens if you see here here you go right so currently it is not authenticated because that function has been uh, needs an authentication that's the reason it is failing but with an authentication it will give the response like we have seen in the cloud shell all right so with that note i have shown you things need to be shown in this video finally a kind request please do subscribe my channel uh, that would really encourage me a lot with that note thank you thanks for and see you in the next video